Do you, are we okay? Am I cuffed? Mm. All right. This is the amateur the amateur hour, so we had an equipment problem. So two videos. We're okay. down to the last. We were talking about advice. Advice um, to the mom. To the mom. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be their dad. Be their mother. Try to put them in front of godly men as much as you can. Mm. And I could really get off on this. One of the biggest, and I'm not going to, but what I mean by that is be careful. As a mother, please recognize that God gifted you, female, feminine, in certain ways. But that also means there's, there are certain things, you, especially your boy children, there are certain things you cannot give them. And, and we and that's so contrary to our culture today. Our culture is like, oh no, you can just be totally independent. You don't need a man or a man or a woman. Our families can look like anything they want to. That is garbage. That is not true, and that is garbage. A boy needs to be taught. He needs to see man, man manly examples, and he needs to be taught how to be a man. And he can be over feminized. And our culture, all by itself, is over feminizing our boys. Everything is feminized. We get on to any kind of soft bullying. And I don't, of course bullying is bad, but just picking on kids, you get such a reaction now that simple picking which can teach, that which, which can teach you what your picking order is and how to respond and things. We, we, we eliminate anything like that. We jump on it too hard. We, can you tell us a quick story about uh, what you told your, your yes. boys if they ever- Yes, I did. If they ever were picking on someone or not picking, not defending someone. My oldest son, Will, who is now in college, first year of college, but he was in ninth grade and he was playing football at JA. And it was on the morning. I usually take him to school because you're already at work. And so it was, it was a, a morning. He and my next child, Reed, who would have been at that time, if Will was in ninth, he would have been in seventh. They were getting ready and Will was worried about something. And we were talking real quick as, as we're getting ready for school. And he was worried, he was upset because there was bullying going on in the locker room. And I asked him, I said, did you, did you speak up? And he had, and I was so proud. He, he spoke up and told them to stop and to leave the kid alone. And this is what I told him. I, I wanted to take it a step further. I said, if that continues, and I was very serious about him. I said, you step in, and if you have to physically fight the bully, then I would expect you to do that. And I said, the greatest, just, I'd be the most proud father that you have ever seen in your life if I had to go down to that school and pick you up because you had been suspended for fighting because you were protecting someone who was being bullied. And I made sure every one of my kids knew that. That I don't, I, it's one thing to be moral. We heard this today. It's one thing to be moral. My morality will not let me pick on somebody. That's not good enough. A character, to have character is to step in and to stop something. So being moral is not good enough. We can all live a moral life. An honorable person is someone who steps in and does something about it. I told my boys, I said it'd be the greatest day of my life to pick you up from being suspended if you were fighting for that reason. So I just use that as, a, as an example to say there's a time to fight. And there's a time as a man that you have to stand up and take action. And that's what I mean by we have to be careful not to feminize our, our boys too much. And I worry that as a culture, that we're doing that too much. Some of it is a function because so many are growing up without men in the house. And some of it is just a function of our political correct culture. It's so politically correct, which generally means anti-male. Anyway, I worry about that with my kids. So what um, advice do you have for fatherless, the fatherless? Three things. Number one, most likely, you know, everybody's choice is different. But number one, I would say, listen to your mother. Listen to your mother. She will be your best friend and your biggest advocate. And when your friends are telling you something, as much as you'd rather listen to them, your mother has your best interest at heart. So without a father, the first thing you've got to understand is that mother, your mother, she is the anchor and she is the one that has your interest at heart even when it doesn't feel like she does because you want to hang out with your friend. Listen to your mother, your best friend, your advocate. The other thing is, you kind of sense this when I was saying that, is you is do not see yourself as a victim. Yeah, you may be behind a little bit. You may be behind other kids who do have fathers in figuring things out. The first time you drive and you have a flat tire, you haven't fixed the tire yet. I mean, there may be places where you're a little behind because you didn't have a dad teaching you that stuff early. So what? That doesn't make you a victim. Get caught up. <laughs> Get caught up, figure it out, and move on and pass all those other kids. Don't 
Don't give up. <laughs> don't give Dedicate up. Dedicate so, yourself. So, so victim, victimhood, absolutely not. We, we don't tolerate excuses. We don't I don't tolerate my boys griping about referees. And that sounds something good, but that's how I teach them things like that. Is I said, can you control what that referee does on that baseball or that soccer field? No. I said, and so I won't let them tell me all that. They always want to gripe about that referee, and I stop them. No. I said, had you scored here, 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 or done this or this, this, it wouldn't matter what the referee did. So I teach my boys to not see themselves as victims. So that's advice number two. You're not a victim. Third is just what we've already talked about, five, find college role models. And again, it doesn't mean that you have to go have some mentor-mentee relationship. Just find godly men that you can see, hang around with sometime, and you can just watch. It'll make all the difference in the world. And here's the other thing, too, is don't hold them up to some crazy standard of perfection. Mm. What I mean by that is men fail. Christian men fail. I've seen that all, all over my years. It we makes me fail. much more... I'm much more gracious and generous with people for that reason. Mm. You fail. I fail. People fail. So in closing, um, I just wanted to read the scripture from Exodus. Um, when God called Israel out, he gave them how to live because they were supposed to be the example to all the other nations on godly people. And uh, he gave them prescriptions for how to live life. And he talked about how to handle the widows and the fatherless. This is Exodus 22. 22 through 24 you shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child if you do mistreat them and they cry out to me I will surely hear their cry and my wrath will burn and I will kill you with the sword and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless so we know that God is our great defender and protector and he hears the cries the fatherless. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day.